The Lord be with you. Welcome to Galloway United Methodist Church's Ash Wednesday service for 2021. It's a little bit of a different Ash Wednesday, isn't it? Not only are we in the midst of a pandemic, but we are also here in our area in the midst of a snow and ice event, as is most of the country in some form. But from wherever you are joining us across the miles, we welcome our Galloway family and friends. And we are glad that you have chosen to begin your Lenten journey of these next 40 days as we prepare for Easter with us. Let us worship together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all of our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let the people say, Amen. Let the people say, Amen. Our prayer of confession tonight is a very traditional Ash Wednesday confession, and it is Psalm 51. Hear now the reading of the word, and may it be our prayer as we approach the throne of God. Let us pray. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone, O God, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. And hear this reading from Joel chapter 2. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged and gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. 
between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O God, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O oh, gracious and loving God, you who are indeed slow to anger, limitlessly patient with us, open our hearts that we may hear your word to us as we enter into such a holy season. Open our minds that we will be attuned to your spirit. And in these 40 days, we open our lives to you as we repent and believe the gospel. Oh God, may this be your message to your people and not mine, your word. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. So tonight we observe Ash Wednesday. And its deep significance as the first day of our Christian season of Lent. Lent is a 40-day journey of spiritual preparation to get ready for the celebration of Easter that marks the miracle of God's amazing power, victory, and love through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we cannot get to the empty tomb of Easter without traveling first to the foot of the cross of Good Friday. To skip the spiritual preparation needed to do so would be to dismiss the ultimate love and sacrificial work of our Savior. Subscribing to a type of cheap grace that just, well, it just doesn't hold and is certainly not faithful. And so we enter with intention into this season of deep spiritual work in order to faithfully walk the journey. In the early church during this season, converts to the faith were prepared through a time of catechesis and education instruction for their baptism, which would take place and in their initiation into the church on Easter Sunday. This season of Lent was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins had been separated from the community of faith in a time of penitence and forgiveness, and they were reconciled and restored to the full participation in the life of the church on Easter Sunday. Now today, we don't often do baptisms on Easter Sunday, though I would argue that we should and we rarely excommunicate members from the community of faith, but the Lenten journey for us is still every bit as important in our own spiritual preparation and our renewal and our penitence as we look to the miraculous work of Easter morning. During Lent, we are called into a time of looking honestly and deeply and our relationship with God, particularly our side of the fence. It is a time that we reflect on our own mortality as we examine and confess the ways that we have separated ourselves from God through our sinful actions and choices. The Lenten journey is both a private and a corporate communal journey that we take through prayer worship, confession, study, and the commitment to Lenten intentions are practices that draw us deeper into self-examination of our faith and that draw us ever back to God. The word repent in the Greek is metanoia, and it translates into the English to turn around, to Turn around. 
And so to repent is to turn around, making our way back to God by first confessing those things that have separated us from God and then intentionally making that journey back toward God by changing our behavior and laying aside the sin that has caused us to be separated. And so tonight's service of Ash Wednesday is a threshold moment because it is a threshold that moves us into this journey of prayer and self-examination and confession and repentance where we are reminded again that we are mortal, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that we are the creature, not the creator, and we need God. We are reminded that we cannot live we cannot live, friends, without the love of God. And we certainly cannot be who we were created and called to be without the presence and the authority of God in our lives. Put another way, the Lenten journey helps us in our lives where we need a change in the ways that are preventing us from being the new creation we were meant to be in Christ Jesus, and then making those changes. In Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, he writes about taking off the old self and clothing ourselves in the new life of Christ. In chapter 3 of the book of Colossians, Paul tells us to strip away everything from our lives that is not of God, everything that is not godly. And in Lenten language, to strip away everything that separates us from God in our sin so that we can put on the new self, this self that is constantly being restored to bear the image and the likeness of Jesus. And in that process, Paul says that there is no longer any identity that matters except for Christ, who is all and in all. And he goes on to describe in a very effective metaphor of clothing what we are to put on once we strip away the sinfulness and the self-centeredness, the worldly things that have made us separated from God and our intention to give ourselves completely to become followers of Jesus. Hear his words from Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called into the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This taking off the old and putting on the new that Paul describes, it is the essence, friends, of what it means to walk the Lenten journey. To turn around, to turn back to God 
and be restored. This wonderful image of putting on Christ means to figuratively clothe ourselves, our lives, with the Lord Jesus Christ, his teachings, his actions, his words, his example, his ways, his essence, to be like him so that our lives will reveal the glory of God to the world as children of God, as the body of Christ that we are, and as brothers and sisters to Jesus. Let's think about this really wonderful image of clothing. You know, we all have certain clothes in our closets, right, that we put on with intention for very different occasions and for different reasons. We have work clothes for work, and whether it's that power suit that we put on for that big presentation where we need to feel confident and capable, or maybe it's a comfortable pair of shoes because we're going to be on our feet all day. Perhaps a particular robe or a stole for clergy or a special dress or a blazer for laity for that special worship service during a particular season of the Christian year. A soft, lightweight jacket or sweater that we can take off and wrap around our waist on vacation if it gets too warm as we tour the city. Our favorite old t-shirt and a pair of warm, fuzzy sweatpants that we change into as soon as we get home because it's our favorite outfit to hang out on the couch and watch TV. The clothes we put on, we put on for a reason. The clothes we choose are not a random choice. Can you imagine wearing a pantsuit on the couch watching a movie on Saturday? Can you imagine wearing your Christmas dress or your Christmas blazer walking on the beach on vacation? Or can you see me, Carrie or Lori, wearing our robes to the grocery store or the church softball game? <laughs> it sounds silly, I know, but here's my point. The clothes we choose are intentional. They have a purpose that matters. And as those who follow Christ, the choices of our heart matter. I think Paul's very smart to use this metaphor of choosing to put on the attributes of Christ like we put on our clothes when talking about the state of our heart and how we are called to live a faithful life in Christ If we have been raised with Christ, friends, which we have through his saving work of salvation, then we should seek the things that are of Christ in every aspect of our life. And this means that we throw off all of the old ways of sin and selfishness, that we lay them aside, that we strip ourselves from them, and we put on the image and likeness of Jesus. We should set our minds and our hearts, spend our time and our intention every day on following in his footsteps, on things that are, as Paul says, above, not things that are on earth. Things such as our ego, our selfishness, greed, idolatry, jealousy, anything that causes us to be separated from God has no place in our lives when following Jesus. Anything that takes us away from God and God's purpose is something that needs to be stripped away from our lives and replaced with the ways of Jesus, the attributes of Christ. This is our Lenten invitation. As we enter into the journey of Lent, we often give up things as a sign of our willingness to repent 
and our self-examination. And that's a good, good thing. We can give up our favorite dessert, candy, Cokes, our favorite TV show, and more serious things like gossip, idleness, anything that tempts us and separates us from God. And we do this to help us understand the importance of, well, repentance and the importance of sacrifice. But can I say to you, we've given up so much this year, haven't we? We are tired. We are weary. We are grieving. And I dare say we have been feeling like we have been walking in a time that feels very much like a Lenten journey of sacrifice. The pandemic has taken so many things from us, good things. And we've had to learn how to live without things in ways that feel very much like a Lenten journey. We've had to make sacrifices and have experienced loss in ways that feel very much like the somber season of Lent. First and foremost, the loss of so many lives to COVID. Many of us have lost loved ones and family members and friends and someone we know and love to this virus. Others have lost jobs. We've had to give up lots of things. We've had to give up treasured time with family and friends, planned vacations, holiday rituals, the celebration of really important mile marker birthdays and anniversaries. These and so many other things that we've had to sacrifice in ways that we never realized before were so important and precious to us until they were taken away. We've been living with these sacrifices longer than we could have ever imagined this time last year when the virus came on the scene, about the same time, friends, as Lent. So if you are feeling like giving up something for Lent feels shallow or rings hollow for you this year, if it doesn't seem to carry the same accessibility or weight for you into the Lenten journey, let me offer an alternative this year. I want us to consider taking something up for Lent. Taking on something. And not just anything, but the characteristics and the qualities of Jesus. I invite us to practice Lent by putting on Christ. What if this year as our Lenten intention, we took up a daily practice of clothing ourselves in the attributes of Christ. What if for Lent, we made it a daily commitment, our deepest intention to live from a place of compassion and kindness, humility and meekness and patience each day? What if we worked extra, extra hard to bear with one another? Not to get our way, but to seek the best way. Not so much to be heard as to listen. What if we made the intention every day of Lent to love deeply, especially when it's hard, and to forgive often? What if each day of Lent we spent time being thankful especially amid these difficult times with gratitude in our heart, refusing, refusing to miss the big and small ways, God is still blessing us. Admittedly, it's a greater challenge during a pandemic, and yet that's why it seems so powerful as a Lenten intention to practice this year. 
practicing Lent by putting on Christ, goodness knows the world needs us to be like Christ during these dark and divided and fearful days that just seem to go on and on. The light of Christ is most visible when the body of Christ shines it through our lives. Oh, of this there is no doubt. Kindness, humility, meekness and patience, forgiveness, love, and peace. Imagine with me if every Christ follower made it our Lenten practice to put on these qualities of Christ from the time we wake up in the morning to the time our pillow hits the bed each night, can you imagine how differently certainly our lives but the world around us might be after these 40 days? It reminds me of what Desmond Tutu said in his good word of advice. Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that change the world. So tonight, we are invited to repent and believe the gospel. Tonight, we begin our journey of 40 days of turning around and making our way back to a loving and a kind and a compassionate and a humble and a forgiving God. Well, who offers us peace and new life in Christ. May we do so. May we turn around back toward God. May we do so by putting on Christ and walking the journey together. My friends, repent and believe the good news of the gospel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. God of mystery and wisdom, be with us this Lenten journey. It's been a long way already. Sickness and worry, isolation and fear, waiting, and our hearts are heavy. Our souls are weary, our bodies are hurting, our hope is wavering, and yet you are with us. God of mystery and wisdom, be with us on this Lenten journey. Show us your grace in the small moments of silence, the prayers offered in person or virtually, the kindness of a stranger, the compassion of a friend, the lighting of a candle, the care of a neighbor, through all of these, Lord, you are with us. God of mystery and wisdom, be with us on this Lenten journey. Settle our hearts, revive our spirits, and increase our faith. Spread your love through us and among us as we seek to put on the image and likeness of Jesus this Lent. God of mystery and wisdom, be with us on this Lenten journey in ashes and dust, reading and listening, wandering and walking, praying and singing, eating and fasting. Show us the way forward. God of mystery and wisdom, be with us in this Lenten journey. As we walk to the cross, keep our eyes fixed on you and your love caring for others, reaching out to the poor, taking our pain, transforming death into life over and over again. God of mystery and wisdom, 
be with us on this Lenten journey. And all God's people said, Amen.